by Lime. Brought to you by Kellogg's, the folks who give you the widest choice of cereals in the whole wide world. All the great grains in the forms you like best. Yours from Kellogg's of Battle Creek. Now let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And on my left, a mystery guest who is returning as a guest panelist. The clue is gentleman songster out on a spree, Mr. Rudy Valley. May I introduce a lady whose beauty is matched only by her brilliance, Arlene Francis. Thank you, Rudy. And now, our gentleman publisher of Random House and columnist for This Week magazine and our own darling panelist, Mr. Bennett Cerf. I have a rather extraordinary announcement to make tonight. I met John Daly at a party last night. He told me that this evening, in honor of Rudy Valley being on the panel, for once, his answers and explanations to us are going to be absolutely honest. <laughs> Here he is, honest John Daly. <laughs> Now, you know that's the most unlikely thing you ever heard in your life. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. Once again tonight, in spite of what Bennett has just said, our purpose is to see if we can stick the panel on every and all accounts. We'll also have a famous mystery guest before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first challenger after... Now let's meet our first challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Eh, these leaky old buildings. <laughs> Dana? Dana Craig, is that right? <laughs> is it Miss or Mrs. Craig? Miss. Miss Craig? <laughs> Definitely. It's going to be a nice show tonight. Where are you from, Miss Craig? Santa Catalina Island. Santa Catalina Island. Mm -hmm. What a wonderful place to be from. Right off California. Right off California. Well, may I introduce the panel, Miss Craig? Thank you. And How do you uh, do? now, would you join me over here? Certainly. There'll be a lot of conferences tonight. <laughs> <laughs> right down here, please. There we are. Now, uh, you know how we keep score? Yes. All right, then let's let everybody at home and our friends here in the theater and the audience know exactly what your line is. We will tell you that Miss Craig is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Bennett Cerf. Miss Craig, it would be gilding the lily to say that you're the loveliest looking girl we've had on this show in a long, long time. And I'd like to know if your extraordinary good looks have anything whatever to do with the work that you do. No. One down and nine to go, Miss Hugh Gallup. <laughs> Flattery will get you nowhere, Bennett, on this program. Oh, gosh, and that Miss... Uh ruled out any possibility of Bennett saying something about Craig's wife. <laughs> uh, then uh, we may rule out the fact that you are a beauty contestant of any type, upcoming, past or present. No. We can't you, rule you that can out? You can rule it out. I mean, if your question is, is Miss Craig here in the terms of being a beauty contestant? The no, answer my turn... My my question is, is she n here not in terms of being any type of beauty contestant? That's right. You may, it may be ruled out, and you can continue right. with the question. Thank you. Uh, do you deal in services, Miss Craig? I beg your pardon? Do you deal in services? Yes, I do. Could Bennett enjoy your services? <laughs> I can't think of anybody more likely to among all my friends. Can your, your services be performed 
in other places than on Catalina Island? Yes. And are they, in fact, performed in other places? Yes. No, and are you asking specifically about Miss Craig? Does she perform her service? No, in are there other people doing the same thing she does, yeah. not on Catalina? Mm -hmm. In other words, you don't have to be on Catalina to do it. That's right. All right. Uh, could women enjoy your services? <laughs> yes. The verb is questionable, but go ahead. <laughs> Well, would they be likely to avail themselves of Miss Craig's services? Would they be likely to? <laughs> yes, is that a better verb? Under no. certain circumstances, they might be likely to. Uh, <laughs> is, is this a service that benefits people? I was afraid you were going to ask that question. <laughs> well, uh, I think here, since we must consider the root base of the word benefit, we'll say no. That's two down and eight to go. I mean, it doesn't seven. do them any good. Bene. Well, let us say there is an extension here of argument which might hold that the end result might be beneficial, but we would doubt that the person who is receiving the benefit of this would hold it to be so. <laughs> Mr. Valley? Do you wear a uniform in your work? No, I don't. That's three down and seven to go, Miss mm. Francis. Uh, you look like a strong girl. <laughs> Uh, do you come in contact in any way with the people, uh, that you deal with, physically? Do you touch uh, them in any way in your job? Yes. Do you work out of doors? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Craig, we have not yet ascertained whether or not you work for a profit-making organization. And it's my guess that you do not work for a profit-making organization. Am I right? You're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> five down and five to go, Miss Kilgallen. Are you engaged in anything that might be considered sports or athletics? <laughs> no. Six down and four to go, Mr. Valley. Do you work for the zoo in Canada, Catalina? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Seven down and three to go, Miss Francis. Is it possible that people are not delighted to meet up with you to have your services rendered to them? Possible. Possible. Uh, do you in any way advise them? In any way advise them? Like to get out? <laughs> I would think that in the term of reference which you have applied here, we'd have to answer yes. Would you have anything to do with getting rid of people that might be obnoxious in any way? Yes. A bouncer. Yes. Is it possible that a girl of your beauty could bounce people that behave badly? Yes. <laughs> Yes, Miss Craig uh, is indeed in the Chichi Club. Chichi Club. Chichi Club in Avalon. Uh, Miss Craig is the bouncer. Now, who is the biggest person you've bounced? Bennett Surf. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, would... do you handle really pretty yes. big fellows sometimes? Yes. Miss Craig is a judo expert. Oh, are you? And they say this comes in very handy. Actually, is employed by the mayor of Avalon, Mr. Taylor, is it? Roy, Roy Taylor. Roy Taylor. By the who? The mayor? The mayor of Avalon, yeah. Well, now, I asked if it was a non-profit making organization. But this is, this little Chi Chi Club makes a profit, we hope, then. <laughs> but the mayor owns it? Yes, the mayor, the mayor owns, owns the Chi uh, Chi Club. It's a little club. side issue. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Craig. It's nice to have you with us and watch my life. One you nailed. Let's see what you can do with the second challenger. Will you come in and sign in, please? Frank? Bisagnano, is that right?
Where are you from, sir? Trenton, New Jersey. Trenton, New Jersey. Yes. Well, you're practically a neighbor. Mr. Bisognano, the panel. Panel, Mr. Bisognano, will you join me over here, Frank? If I may, do you know how we keep score? Yes, sir. All right. For the folks in the theater, in the audience, those at home, here is what your line is. Mr. Bisognano is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Arlene Francis. Do you work for a profit-making organization, Mr. No, Bisognano? One down and nine to go, Mr. Uh -huh. Sir. Do you work for some kind of a governmental agency, Mr. Bisognano? Yes, I do. Would it be the federal government? Yes. Uh, is the work you do of a, have anything to do with penal or disciplinary action? No, it's not. Two down and eight to go, Miss Kilgallen. Could anyone on this panel use your services? No, ma'am. Well, now, I would, if with your permission, Frank, the specific kind of service which he performs, you could use under certain circumstances, right? Yes, sir. But do we have similar services performed in New York for those of us who live in New York? No. Well, here again, Frank, Frank I better have a small conference. See? Here again, Dorothy, the service which we're discussing here, uh, performed by others, might be available to anybody on the panel under certain given circumstances. That's what I meant. Uh, is it unlikely that we would want to avail ourselves of your services if we could avoid it? <laughs> is it unlikely? No, it's not. No, I would think you're absolutely right about that. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Dowling. Is yours an elected job, uh, elective? Yes, it people. is. Elected? Elective. You were elected? Well, I mean... <laughs> <laughs> but now, I think Mr. Valley here has specific reference to being elected to a public office. Oh, excuse me. No. So that's four down and six to go, Miss Francis. He's not elected. <clears throat> He's not elected. Uh, do you like your work? Yes, ma'am. You happy? Yes. That's good. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what um, do you have any uh, uh, attachment in your job for things like research? No, ma'am. Five down, five to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Bessignano, in the course of your work, do you ever come into any kind of juxtaposition with animals of any kind? No, I don't. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. You say you are from Trenton. Yes, ma'am. Do you do any of your work in Trenton? No, ma'am. Seven down and three to go, Figures. Mr. Valley. By any chance, are you incarcerated and at liberty for the moment? <laughs> Good heavenly <laughs> days, the Betsy. <laughs> I believe the jails are in Trenton, aren't they? No, he's not in jail presently. No. I... <laughs> Eight down and two to go, Miss Benson. Do you have anything to do with money in any way? No, ma'am, I don't. That's nine Except down and one to go. <laughs> Mr. Sir. See, now, we have nothing to do with animals. We have nothing to do with penal or disciplinary. We have nothing, nothing to do with, with money. money. He's in rough shape. Yes. <laughs> uh, do you issue any kind of certificates or licenses to people? No, sir, I don't. Ten down and no more to go. Mr. Bisignano is a cook on the United States Navy's blimp. Uh. A United States Navy blimp. The airship test and development yes, sir. service, isn't it? Yes. And what's he goes, your best dish? What's, what, what do they like up there? In the steak? steak? Yeah, there's an imaginative little run. Huh? Yeah. Bennett's answer off camera was the girl who just walked off. <laughs> <laughs> That's a dish they don't have on blimps. That's a dish they don't have on blimps. And actually, the interesting thing about it is that Mr. Bisignano's blimp goes off on extended flights. What's the longest you've made? Right now, uh, 36 hours. 36 hours. And they go out for up to 48 hours, and he keeps them all uh, well-fed and happy. Are you meeting the Nautilus tomorrow? No, ma'am, not. Why not? Everybody else is. <laughs> well, on that happy note, Mr. Bisignano, <laughs> thanks very much for being our guest on What's My Line. It was I nice to have you with us. And now, we'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment. But first, here is a word from our alternate sponsor. Now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which I ask 
my friends on the panel to blindfold themselves. All blindfolds in place now? Mm -hmm. Nice. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? Panel, as you know, in the case of our mystery celebrity, we go to a different form of questioning. You will ask one question at a time, in turn, moving clockwise, and we begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Do you make records? Do you make records? No. <laughs> one thousand nine to go, Mr. Valley. Do you deal in services? No. <laughs> yes, I think we have services here, Rudy, but it's more a matter of trying to ascertain the specific identification of our guest than his occupation. Are you associated with the motion picture business? Mm, yes. Mr. Sir? Have you ever directed a big picture? Well, yes. Yeah. Miss Kilgallen? Director, did he say? The question Bennett posed was, have you ever directed a big picture? And the answer to that oh. would be yes. Well, are you Alfred Hitchcock? Alfred Hitchcock, did you say, Dorothy? Well, I know he's in town. Well, he's maybe in town, but, but he's, he's not, not here. Not here. Huh? That's two down okay. and eight to go, Mr. Valley. Have you had a picture released in the last six months? Mm, yes. Miss Francis? Are you in New York because you are associated with a picture that is about to be released? Yes. Who's that, honey? Are you, That's it. Are you married to a beautiful girl with a very husky voice? Yes. And she wears a diamond heart. She's cute. <laughs> Boy, if I do it again, are you Dick Powell? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, a man of so many careers and with such great skills <laughs> in all of them, it's a little bit surprising to realize that Dick Powell, whom I knew first, and as I'm sure a great many of you did, New first as an actor and as a singer, is now a producer and a director. You produced and directed the new uh, Air Force film, didn't that's you? That's right. Which yes, is that's right, John. The Hunters. The, the jet, Hunters. Yes. The Jet War in Korea, and you produced it and directed it, but you didn't act in it. That's right. Uh, Robert Mitchum is the star yeah. of it. But you have been known to produce, direct, and act. In the well, same not, in, not in the same picture. You can't no. do it all. I wouldn't dare. Oh, wait, do I that. thought that's a wonderful picture, Dick. I wish you'd try it. See, because you run out in front of the camera, and then you act, and then you run behind the camera and say, that's. No good. Just do it over again. Then you run back and get it from the camera. I think this would make a great movie, don't you think so? Well, we'll try. We'll try that sometime, John. Well, much success with the movie. You made uh, the undersea picture for the Navy. You even worked for the government, practically. Oh, now. gracious. All the service pictures. Huh? All the service pictures. Oh, that was called The Enemy Below. Yeah. That, that, that was a submarine picture, and this is an Air Force picture. I go from one extreme to the other. Yeah. Well, of course, I'm really here for two reasons, you know. Am I allowed to talk about another television show on the yes, same network? you certainly are. Well, uh, next Sunday night, the Ed Sullivan Show with an all-Air Force show. And you're going to be MC. I'm going to be MC. Ed's on a vacation, and I'm going to do the job. Ah, wonderful. It will make it very worthwhile watching, sir. Thank you, John. And we Where's are your pleased... your beautiful wife? Yes. My be it, believe it or not, she's home asleep. And you know, Bennett is, is a pretty good detective because he called a few moments ago and talked to us, and she gave such a fantastic alibi, I was sure that he'd know I was going to be here anyway. <laughs> as, I, as I hung up the phone, I said to fellas, Dick Powell will be the mystery guest tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Just for sure. Well, Dick, it was nice of you to give us some of your time, because I you know John. you're busy and much success with the picture and with that <laughs> wonderful career. Thank you. Nice, nice to have you with us. say you've done very well so far tonight, panel, and we'll have another contestant after this word from our sponsor. Now let's have another contestant. Will you come in and sign in, please? Right there, please. Natalie? Carbone? Mangini. Is that right? <laughs> Miss or Mrs. Mangini? Mrs. Mrs. Mangini. Yes. Where are you from, ma'am? Crabtree, Pennsylvania. Crabtree, Pennsylvania? Yes. Well, isn't that grand? Crabtree, Pennsylvania. That's wonderful. Mrs. Mangini, the panel. Panel. Mrs. Mrs. Mangini, will you join me here, please? <coughs> are you familiar with the way we keep score? Oh, yes. That's fine. Then we'll let everybody at home. 
and the folks here in the audience know exactly what your line is. All right, panel. Once again, Mrs. Mangini is salaried, and let's begin the general questioning with Rudy Valley. You, you delve in services? Yes. Would they benefit mankind as a general thing? Yes. Do you wear a uniform? Part of the time. Part of the time? Part of the time. Is this a governmental or a federal uniform? uniform? No. You mean no. a governmental or federal uniform? Yeah. No. No. Uh, no occupation? No. Mm -mm. One no. down, nine to go, Miss Francis. Do people come to you for your services? No. No, I wouldn't no. think so. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sif. Mrs. Mangini, has your work got anything to do with either farming, dairying, agriculture of any kind? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Mrs. Mangini, do people watch you when you're doing what you do? No. Four down and six to go, Mr. Valley. Is your job patriotic? Yes. Does it have anything to do with the American flag? No. <laughs> Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Miss Mangini, do you do a job that is uh, usually done by men? Yes. Are uh, you out of doors some of the time in your work? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Mrs. Mangini, do you ever work near or around any kind of missiles or uh, instruments of destruction? Yes. 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 To some degree. Would your work sometimes be done in a laboratory? Yes. Have you got anything whatever to do with one of the uh, missiles or things that are going to be aimed at outer space? No. Or so on? No. no. That's seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Would you be cl classified as a scientist by the government? Yes. Are you an atomic scientist? Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Bennett. That's very good, panel, because uh, one, one happy bit of news, though, that I want to take, of, uh, take care of first. This is Mrs. Mangini's birthday, so happy birthday. Oh, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. <laughs> but actually, Mrs. Mangini is an atomic scientist with Westinghouse, Westinghouse. And has had some association with the development uh, patterns that have produced the atomic submarines. I mean, and the would, Nautilus. The Nautilus. Would you be good <laughs> enough to tell us? I mean, we, I, don't, I know that some of these areas are sensitive and there's security involved, but what do you as an atomic scientist have to do, for instance, with the development of, of the Nautilus? And the... Oh, develop the chemical procedures that were used aboard the Nautilus. And uh, I helped uh, do some of the work connected with the shipping port power reactor. Also. The shipping port thing. What, where did you go to school? Seton Hill. Seton Hill? A girl's school. A girl's school. Well, I hope you went to a girl's school. <laughs> and what, did you take a degree uh, immediately in, in science? A uh, Bachelor of Arts, bachelor. actually. In science? Yes. And did you graduate work, do graduate work after that, or did you? Yes, at uh, Carnegie Tech. Carnegie Tech, and mm -hmm. then went up to Westinghouse. Yes. My Are there any other girls working in that kind of job? Uh, recently, we hired another one. There's uh, just the two of us now. They're getting in everywhere. <laughs> yes, I think Bennett's got it right, you know. They're getting in everywhere. <laughs> it's a great, great thing, bouncers and atomic <laughs> scientists. It really knocks one over a bit, doesn't it? No. Well, I must say thank you very much for being our guest. Again, a very happy birthday, and uh, thanks a lot for coming along and having some fun with us. Until next week, uh, Mr. Valley, it was very nice to have you with us, and uh, I hope you had good fun. And uh, let's all stay out of the Chi Chi Club. <laughs> or at least, if not, let's, get, let's not get bent out of it, then bounced out of it. And good night, uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Hi ho, Rudy. Good night, uh, Aline. Good night, dear. You happy? Very happy. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't come up with something. Else. Good night, Bennett. Good night, Aline. Good night, Honest John. Good. <laughs> my friend, that's the nicest thing anybody ever said about me. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Line. 
If you'd like to attend our broadcast and see the panel and our guests in person, write for tickets to What's My Line, CBS Television, 485 Madison Avenue, New York, 22, New York. Transportation for contestants on What's My Line is arranged by United Airlines. This has been a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Codman. Hal Sim speaking.